and welcome to another one of my videos. Um, after making this uh, wall generator here, I thought that I'd make one a little bit more mobile and a little bit smaller. So I thought I'd give this a go. A, a two pulleyed uh, dynamo generator, two pulleys and a motor from a printer. It's uh, not that small, but at least it is mobile. Now because we're using a motor from a printer, it's giving us 12 volts, which is enough to run a motorcycle headlamp, which is quite decent. So I'm going to take a piece of uh, just chipboard or any board as my base, and then I cut uh, a couple of uh, circles manually, like as in other videos, and that those along with a motor which I got out of a something along with this pulley is going to dictate more or less what sort of L, uh, height we're going to need there and that's going to basically tell me how wide my two side sticks are going to be and one along the top which is going to be the size and shape of my apparatus then I will nail those together and then I will put a plywood back on it, put measuring there, cutting it and nailing it on the back. And then nail the base on. So there we have the base in which we're going to put our pulleys. Now I found that the, the elastic had the tendency of wandering off the pulleys, so I decided to put some cardboard uh, sides on it to raise them rather than make cutting a V into it. So we're going to drill a hole through there to take its stick through its axle. Then I'm going to take a stick and with a hand plane just make that into a round stick. So that that will go through there. So on the back of that base we're going to find out where that is going to go roughly. Then find roughly halfway down there. We're going to get another stick like this, put it on also and find halfway. Then with that back on there, we're also going to find halfway through here. And in that mark, bore a hole of the same size as the shaft through both of them. Now with four screws from some old electronics, I'm going to screw that on. Then cut that off there with a the saw. Now on the back side, I'm going to put another strip of that and this is going to go roughly central as well again and I'm going to then drill a hole through the two boards to give me the axle center. Then I'm going to put a piece of wire or a nail or this is a, a steel rod that I just found somewhere uh, put the thing through there and put that in the hole so that I know where I'm going to then have that pulley and screw that on and chop that off. Now that bottom pulley here needs a spacer and somewhere that the belt from the top one is going to run on. So we get a piece of broomstick, put it in there loosely and mark it and cut off a piece that length there. Then I'm going to drill a hole right through the center. If I go halfway from this side, then turn it over and come from the other side, I sh it should meet in the middle. Now I roughened up the uh, plastic coating that's on that board, I put some glue on there and it's gonna go on there in glue. Now I've just turned them around there, I just put that up the other way so you can see that there's the big wheel and that one spins freely on its nail. Now it's time to make the belt. Now for the belt I've used a flat piece of elastic similar to that which is in a bra. In fact I did use a piece of bra strap initially but just you can get some new bra strap as it'll be nice and stretchy and good. Wrap it around there and you want to calculate it so it's just tight around those two there and then gonna sew those two ends together. Now there are two things that I need to fix on this version as compared to the uh, original one uh, and one of them is this is why I've got this clamp here. The first thing is that the belt keeps wandering off, the pulley that is. 
Now that happens when you have a shaft going through. If we look through a cross section and have our belt going down to our other pulley, that's our belt. If we have the other axle on an angle, because we're inaccurate on our two points of uh, our two holes in the back there, that's exaggerated of course, uh, the tension on that is going to make it want to wander up the axle. So we need to be able to lower that back down to where it's level so that the axle is now level and the belt has an even tension and will not wander left or right. So I took all those other three screws out and left one large one there so that I can pivot on that point and then I can with this clamp I can raise or lower it a millimeter or two at a time until I get to the point where it's not going to come off the pulleys. Then screw some screws back in. Now the other problem I had on this version compared to the original is that I found that the packets of rubber bands that they sell these days are smaller than the ones I had on the other ones so now it's a little tight so that when I try and do that there's not enough uh, grab on that pulley to have it spin on that particular motor but we can replace it with a smaller one at least that's one of my options and yes it'll spin okay but if I want to use this big one, I'll probably have to reduce the size of that pulley to uh, have that not quite so tight so that I can use that motor. So there we have it. Um, it seems to be working all right. Uh, the motor that I was wanting to use was a little bit too stiff, so I've used one in between and it seemed to work okay. And give me enough to light these leads quite happily.